going on landscapers and outdoor go-getters today we are at winder outdoor power again in the shop and we have a toro with an issue so today we're going to show you how to fix and repair a toro lawnmower and this will go across the board with many many other lawnmowers in particular with the briggs and stratton engine now this is a pretty common engine that is used on a lot of lawnmowers across the Toro brands, Craftsman and Troy built, and so on. There's many, many engines. There's many of these Briggs engines that is on a lot of these push mowers and self-propelled mowers like this one that always has the same issue and it is fuel related. We're gonna show you how to tear it down, how to fix it, pretty much how to diagnose it. So on your lawnmower, if you have a mower that just will not start, you can pull the rope a hundred times, it never wants to start, or you pull the rope and it starts up and dies immediately, this is going to be your problem, I guarantee it. So, let's get started on what tools you need, what parts you need, and most of all, how to fix it. So here we go. Also, if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button as I'm sure you're about to learn something and there's plenty more videos to come that'll help you out. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Also throw a comment down there and tell me if this video helps you out. All right, so we're gonna go over the particular mower that we're working on. Again, this is a Toro Recycler, very common machine. This has the Briggs & Stratton 725, 163cc engine. And pretty much, again, this, this engine's on a lot of lawnmowers. And the best way to identify this engine is if you have this plastic cover right here, okay? And if you have an air filter that looks like this, this is gonna be your issue for a won't start or starts up and dies immediately problem. So there's your quick identifier if this is gonna be the repair that you're looking for on your machine. All right, so now we're gonna go on to the first steps of what I do before I get into this repair job. First thing I do, I never trust the fuel that is in any lawnmower that comes in the shop, especially if it's a no start or a start and die issue. First thing I'm gonna do, you can do this many ways. I have a little fluid sucker recovery unit you can get at Harbor Freight or online at Amazon. But first thing I do is I suck out the tank and drain it. Now you can do that or you can pop off the fuel line right here and then drain the tank as well. That is step one, get all the fuel out of the tank. Now, the one part you're gonna need for this besides some new fuel, when I do this job, I replace the main jet and this is the repair for most all of these issues is the little jet in here gets clogged up and this is the part number right there for that jet from Briggs and & Stratton. And these are plastic little assemblies and they have a couple of brass little jets in here. Now you can clean these little jets out and sometimes that will work and get it running. Um, I've had instances where it does work, it runs, but maybe it has a surge. These are cheap. And if you're gonna go into the carburetor on these, I just highly recommend replacing this. Replacing this along with flushing out the carburetor is gonna fix your problem, I guarantee it. So here we go, let's get started. Now, for tools you're gonna need, you are gonna need a 9 socket. Nothing special, just a 9 socket. You're gonna need a 5 16 socket and I'm gonna use my little hand impact here. This is a great little tool. Not necessary, all you need is a ratchet or some hand tools to do this. So, we already got our fuel sucked out. We're gonna pop off this cover. We're gonna lay that down. We're gonna pull the air filter out. And then you have four screws to remove. You have two, the silver ones are the 9 seconds, and then these darker ones are the 5 16 so we're gonna grab our tool real quick. Oh, we got the 5 16ths on there. We're gonna remove those. Bear with me, I'm trying to do this with one hand here. 
All right, so we got that one. And we're gonna switch sockets real quick. Remove the 930 seconds. All right, we're gonna lay those screws down to the side. And then this cover just pulls off like so. Now, when you go to reinstall this, Pay attention right here on the back. You see this little uh, nipple sticking out right here. This is for your breather hose to connect to, which is this hose right here. You want to make sure you have this hose plugged back on to this little nipple right here. If not, you're going to suck dirt right into this cover and it won't get filtered. It's going to go right into the carburetor and it's going to clog everything up and it's going to ruin your engine. So you want to make sure that you get this little black hose plugged back on to this area right here where my finger's at. All right, other than that, the next thing is we're going to unhook the fuel line that's right here and then you have a couple of linkages up here on top of the carburetor you have to remove. Try to zoom in here. Now they are different as you can see. Right here is a great time where you want to grab your cell phone and snap a picture before you take any of this apart. That way you know exactly where each one of these linkages needs to go and how they were before you remove the carburetor. I've done this many times so I know this like the back of my head, but if it's your first time, definitely take a picture as this can get confusing later on if you don't do this all the time. All right, so I'm gonna grab my tool. We're gonna pull off this fuel line right here on the carburetor. And I just use a basic pair of flat, I call them little duckbill duck pliers. Any pliers will work. Squeeze your clamp, scoot it back. And then I have a pair of little angled needle noses here. And what I do is get there like so. And I pry the line off. Just like that. There we go. All right, so the line's disconnected. And again, I've already drained all the fuel out of this tank. Remember, before you put all your new stuff in the carburetor and put it back together, make sure you have your tank drained and you have fresh fuel on hand to put back in this tank. Otherwise, you're gonna ruin your repair and you're gonna have to do it over again. Gotta have fresh fuel. Gasoline will go bad in as quick as 30 days. So fresh fuel is a must have. All right, so now what we're gonna do is if you grab the carburetor, you're gonna pull it straight off, a little wiggle action here, and it comes off of the little intake tube. All right, on this part here, we're just gonna grab the carburetor as we've already got it loose, and we just have to unhook this linkage here, which goes over to your auto choke, and then this linkage here, which is the bigger one, right here, if you can see that, one right there, that one is what goes to your governor and operates your throttle. So, what I do is I turn the carburetor up about like this, grab this big one first and I will wiggle it out and you see it is unhooked now and we will just lay that over to the side and then this one's pretty easy both of these uh, both of these control rods has what is called a z-bin so basically you're just trying to get it off of the z-bin so as this one is sitting here all I got to do is turn the carburetor up and then it pulls right out of that z bend. Now our carburetor is loose, so we're going to go over here to the table and dissect it. And real quick, on the bottom, you have two more screws, which are the 930 seconds. So we're going to remove these two screws real quick with our tool. And now we are going to take these two screws out. And we're going to get a little flathead screwdriver 
and you're just going to kind of work this bottom off right here like this and then it comes apart now I've already drained the fuel on this so when you do yours you will have fuel inside this carburetor that's going to come out everywhere so just be ready to catch the fuel and now that the bowl's off you're going to see that's our main jet so you'll take your little flathead screwdriver again and what I do is I get right here under that part where that jet sits in and I just give it a little pry and then the jet pops up and there you go there's the old jet now we're going to get our new jet and it goes in the same way but before I install my new jet I usually take a little WD-40 and I spray these O-rings right here. I just kind of get them wet. That way the new jet will go down and seat very easy and for insulation all you do is take two fingers, push it down and you'll hear it click or snap and that means it's seated all the way in. Now we take our bowl and we put it back on the same way. If you notice, you see this, how this jet's made, you'll see this little jet sticking out to the side, and you see the bottom of our bowl inside has a little square cut out in it. That is where that jet needs to sit. So you wanna make sure that you line this up to where that jet sits in that little pocket. Line up your holes where your screws go through, and then push. All right, after you have your bowl seated back on, you're going to take your two screws and thread them back in the bottom of the carburetor here. And then you're going to get your ratchet or gun or whatever it is you're using. Tighten them up. All right, now your carburetor has been repaired and your lawnmower will start. Now we just got to put everything back together. So everything goes back together just as you took it apart. So we're going to mount the carburetor back on the machine, hook up our fuel line, put fuel in the lawnmower, make sure you get your linkages hooked back up correctly. The thicker one goes towards the back of the carburetor. That is the one that runs your governor. And then the skinny rod is the one that goes to your auto choke, which goes right here in this hole. And that runs your choke. As you can see right here, that is towards the front of the carburetor. So there you go. We're gonna mount everything back up and see if this thing starts up. All right, so as we're waiting for the table to go down, now's a good time to check your oil. Make sure to check your oil level and make sure it's full. All right, here we go. starts up easily runs good very simple straightforward repair so again if you have a Briggs engine with this particular design Toro lawnmower doesn't matter what it's on these engines usually always end up being the same problem that little plastic jet seems to always get clogged up if they sit up for a while or the fuel goes bad usually all it takes to get these things running again so again Pretty easy repair. The part number to that jet I showed you at the beginning of the video. And 
that jet fits all of these engines that is designed like this with an air filter that looks like that right there. So again, recap, drain the fuel, take the carburetor off, pull out the old jet, put the new jet in, put the carburetor back on, put fresh fuel in it, should run like a top. Pretty straightforward. I think we got about 15 minutes in this thing. And if it's your first time, it might take you a little bit longer, but again, very easy job to do. Hope that helps you guys out. As always guys, please hit that like button. Put a comment down there if the video helped you out. Also, don't forget, subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost anything. And there will be tons of new content coming up in the future as we repair all kind of equipment here. Lawn mowers, chainsaws, weed eaters, riding mowers, zero turns, aerators, real mowers. We do it all. There will be tons of videos to come in the future, guys. So stay tuned, stay safe out there, and we'll see you guys on the next one.